All right, for this week's fly, we're gonna go with a mop fly. So we're just gonna go ahead and get zoomed in here. No, no, we will not be tying with used cleaning materials. Um, if y'all ever see me fishing one of these, if y'all ever meet me on the river and you see me fishing a mop fly, just go ahead and kick me right in the junk. Just, no. I will never tie one of these flies. I will never fish it. We're going with something that actually uses material. Um, this is going to be a variation of the Miss October. So, um, we just changed a few things up on this. This has been um, my most popular pattern, most effective pattern by far. Um, this, the Tenet 2, um, I've had a lot of success with. Um, but we kind of cut down the tie and time on this a little bit and we added a couple different features to this pattern. So I figured we'd go ahead and it's probably going to wind up becoming a series of a few other ideas of things that I would like to do with this pattern. But we're just going to go ahead and show you the updated version of what we have. Sorry for anybody who likes fishing mop flies by the way. They might be good for bucket fish. Maybe about it. But anyhow, we're just starting out with some uh, ice wing fiber. And we're gonna drop it on the chair first. Ice wing fiber in the minnow back color. And we're gonna do this one in olive today. The last one we did was in black. And that's been the color that I've had the most success with. Um, probably because I fish it more often, but it just seems to seems to do really well for me. I like that color combination. But we're gonna go with this is just if I can find the package. Yeah, it's the barred olive brown and black uh, MFC Marabou. Just tie this in and we're gonna palmer this up. Don't worry about the spacing a whole lot on this because we're gonna peel it all back and it's just gonna act as our tail and it's gonna cover the flash up a little bit. I got one or two that's trapped in there. There we go. Just run that right to the front. Go right over top of this. Kind of peel all that back. That's going to act as our tail. Um, next up, we're going to take this uh, olive brown uh, UV polar. The original we did. Uh, ice dub with uh, the schloppen and we counter wrapped it. And, uh, I still tie those, still fish them. This is just another one that I tie and carry with me. Um, you'll see a couple slight differences. This is one of them from the original. Like I said, it does speed up the tying just a little bit because we're putting in one material right here as opposed to three with the uh, schlop and the ice dub and then the wire for the counter wraps but just go ahead and work this through here give it three or four turns to the front just kind of peel your fibers back give it a squeeze and 
three or four and then anchor. And leave yourself a little bit of room, maybe an eighth of an inch up at the front. Go ahead and tie this off. These are just two uh, olive grizzly. Uh, this is just off of an old saddle. I've had this thing for oh years now. It's just about picked out. We've got another one on the way though. I bet you I've had that thing for 15 years or better. Just gonna run the lateral line. I would like this to go ideally you know maybe another half inch or an inch further back but like I said we're getting down to the very end of this so we're gonna have to use what we have but it'll work this way so just pair up your second one that tied in and our back hooks essentially done we got one more plume of marabou to put in and we'll color the thread up and we'll get on to the front of the hook uh, this one looks pretty good to secure this. Now we're gonna get a quick half hitch. Um, same thing as always with this, just kind of grab right at the very tips of it and then you can see how I have that eighth of an inch roughly left from the stem that I tied in and it allows it, allows it to rotate so your natural curve of the feathers are already going back toward your tail of your hook and then just pick these out it makes it a lot easier when you do this when you tie them in this way for your feathers to lay back and cover everything up how you want it if not you can already see like the natural but the feathers are wanting to come back that direction tied in the opposite way and they're going to stand up on you and not really cover anything up so just peel all this back give it about three reps and this is a little sparse too I mean I could have went a little thicker on that but I have a thick one that I'm going to use for the third one we tie in it'll be the first one on the front hook so it'll cover that up for us and just whip finish this real quick and we'll touch this up with some with an olive marker And there's your back hook. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, a little bit quicker than the original, but don't get too excited because we're going to take a little bit extra time on the front hook. So we have our 
eyes and wire tied in. Uh, we have our next marabou plume that's going to act as our skirt tied in and we're just going to palmer this up. This is another one I don't feel like I have a really good grip on. Might walk away from me here. We'll see. Try and keep the tension off of it as best I can. And then just run this right to the back. And we're going to stop right between the hook point and the barb. And we're just going to leave it. That's where our thread's going to hang. Just tighten that up a little bit. You can see, yeah, the camera side looks pretty good too. We have a nice connection, a nice little skirt covering up our two points. And when this gets wet, I mean, it really, it really covers up nicely. Um, what we're going to do next with this is if I can get a hold of it, we're going to put in these four millimeter rattles, um, just a glass rattle. A couple different companies have them. This is just a package that I had uh, from before. I think that was, yeah, Rainey's made that one. But it, like I said, it's just a four millimeter glass rattle. And this is just to add a little bit extra to the fly. I was watching one of Kelly's, um, one of his videos, and he was fishing the Mo Land of the Giants, and he was fishing it with uh, Billy Erdman, one of his buddies, and Bill's a big uh, gear guy, uh, Rapala's, um, things of that nature. And those two were having a conversation, and Bill was talking about, you know, fish being able to see, or not maybe necessarily see, but um, detect dark flies at night. And he was saying, well, it's because, partially because the, the Rapala has the hooks that'll click off this, the metal por portion of the lure and it, it makes a sound and it feel, he feels you know that allows the fish to pick up where the prey are, are at and then Kelly was then explaining you know about different wavelengths that an injured fish makes and what they try to do to imitate that with lures or with flies and and I got to reading on it and I'm still not as well versed as I would like to be at all but I can't remember what the wavelength is, but they were saying that any sort of sound can add to it. So I figured, well, we'll just throw some glass rattles in the popular pattern and see how it does and see if it adds to it at all. But I'm not the first one to do this. You know, Tommy Lynch did it with the, the shad wraps and I want to say there are a couple other guys I can't remember off the top of my head that have done this, but Anyhow, long story short, we got glass rattles on them this October now. But to tie those in, you saw me, I just took a little bit of zap before you put the glass on top of it. Um, kind of set it into place, throw your thread wraps over top. Once you get your thread wraps in, tip it to the side and just kind of throw your, throw some zap right where the glass and the hook meet. And I haven't had a problem with one of these slipping or sliding on me. Then we'll just take our UV puller and go right over top of this. I mean, if you really want to, you can throw some more UV right on top of the right on top of your thread wraps and the glass rattle. It'll give you a little bit more assurance, but like I said, I haven't had any issues with it just doing it this way. Plus, there's already some uh, glue on there that hasn't kicked yet, and it'll catch this. I mean it. This stuff's not going to move on you. For this, your wraps don't have to be one right in front of the other. You can see I kind of, well, as I was going, you were able to see that I just kind of had 
a little space in between them and once I get back on the actual hook shank itself I go one right on top of the other and that's going to cover us right there so you can see without even adding any more material we have plenty of UV coming out you can hardly even tell anymore I've got my cradle in the way you can hardly even tell anymore that that rattles in there I mean it's pretty discreet once the materials are on there and we still have more stuff to put on so our last plume of marabou we'll get this one put in okay. half hitch bring your cradle around and we're going to run this as close to the eyes as we can may even actually get right on top of the eyes and I got a couple trapped in here it's going to wind up being a little more sparse than I thought it was going to be when I first looked at that feather but it'll do going to give us a little bit more motion, a little bit more cover for the rattle. And when this gets wet, it's all going to slick back and give a nice profile. There we go. Now we're going to take three rubber legs. This is the, what is it? gold amber and black I just really like using this color when I'm tying an olive for some reason I don't know it just the, the colors look right to me so get that marabou out of the way there we'll take one loose wrap two loose wraps figure eight we have an X on top of the legs adjust them where you want them Get them out of the way there, and then pull tight right in front of it. Your legs are set. Trim those. We're going to throw a straw over top of this. Just to keep our legs out of our way. That way we don't accidentally trim one or cut one when we're going through this going through building the head for the head on this it's just a 50 50 blend uh, Sanyo's laser dub of olive and brown if you want to go heavy on the brown um, originally when I did this one I just did it all olive and it looked fine when it was on the vise um, the second it got in the water, that's all you saw was the olive head. I mean, it just stuck out and it just looked terrible. So, I kind of toned it down a little bit and we went with the 50-50. And it does look a lot better in the water. So, we get a stack on the top, stack on the bottom, don't worry about your length for now we're going right behind the eyes then we're going to go right in front of the eyes with the next one I kind of changed up the head a little bit on this as well from how I was doing it on the original um, the original I think I got a little bit too heavy on it so I kind of parted that down just a touch but no drastic changes just a little bit less material but we still have a good profile um, we're gonna go with a trigger point a red a red throat on this and then another stack
for the last one, this is the only one that I do different now. Um, the one, two, three, four of them were all stacked. This one I go back to how I did it originally, so I just kind of get a, I don't know what that is, maybe a popsicle stick width. And I just kind of open this up to where you have a nice circular opening right there. And if you've watched the other videos, I mean, you've seen how I do this. I do this with Ram's Hole too. And just kind of throw that right over top. Get right in front of your eye, one loose wrap, two loose, and then your third one, you just kind of tighten it up a little bit. And then bring all of this back. And this just kind of fills your head out. Um, kind of covers up the gaps a little bit, it seems. And that's it. We get one more whip finish on here, some color. We'll trim it and call it good. Um, get my trusty toothbrush out here. I swear I never used this one. It was strictly for fly time from the very beginning. So, just in case anybody has any questions on that. nice picked out nice angle and then just run this right back um, not a real straight cut just kind of angle this back a little and you can see as this folds down as it gets wet it's not going to interfere with your hook or anything and then come back at an angle on this one as well um, you can make it look as pretty as you want to when it's on the vise as soon as it gets in the water, it's not going to look how it does now. I mean, just get the overall profile of the head that you're after. And then I'll come through here and I'll clean these eyes up. I like being able to see the eyes. So I just cut out a little bit on that and a little bit on my side. That way the eyes are nice and visible. Peel our straw off. And get these legs looking half decent here. Well, that one went in pretty good. Bleeding already. And there it is. There it is. My last pull just kind of threw everything around there. But that is the updated version, or the improved, if you will. I don't know which way. Um, like I said, I still fish both of them. They're still good patterns both ways. But uh, this is the updated Miss October. Um, as always, any questions, leave them with me, and I'll get back to you. But thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next week.